Recently on Lessons in Leadership, our sister series, Mary Gamba, our executive producer and co-anchor, and I sat down with Lori Zaleski, who is the author and the owner and founder of the Funny Farm Rescue and Sanctuary, to talk about a whole range of issues. And Mary was especially interested in this topic of animal rescue. And we wanted to bring it to our broader audience here on One on One. So let's check out that conversation. Welcome back, Steve Adubato, Mary Gamba, and we're honored to be joined by Laura Zaleski, who is the author and owner and founder of Funny Farm Rescue and Sanctuary. That's Lori's book. Is it, it, do you admit that that's your book, Lori? That is my book, indeed, yes. And who do you have with you? This is Puppy, and Mary said, is that a koala or a dog? <laughs> and this is, in fact, a dog, but uh, he looks like a koala. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. And Mary, Mary, this was your idea. This is my idea. A, so I, I I'm going to give a quick story. So Lori, um, I have had a dream of owning a dog rescue my entire life. So Steve knows I'm on the five-year plan of finishing. Steve and I have worked together for 22 years. So my next phase of my life, I'm going to be in dog rescue and animal rescue. So my sister sent me your book a couple of months ago. And I literally read the entire thing on a plane ride. I was crying my eyes out. So you have inspired me and so many. And I would love for you to share for all our viewers who don't know who you are, what you do, where you do it. Tell us what the Funny Farm is, the sanctuary. Uh, what is it and where is it? So the Funny Farm is one of the largest sanctuaries in the Northeast. We have over 600 rescue animals. It is free to get in. We are open two days a week, Tuesdays and Sundays. Every single animal is a rescue. We have pigs, horses, goats, ducks, chickens, geese, alpacas, donkeys, dogs, cats, a skunk. So it's it runs the gamut of what we have, emus. So every single one needed a home where they were either going to be euthanized or they were disabled, unwanted, neglected, abused. So some of the really sad stories, but the funny farm, we're the funny farm. We concentrate on where they are going and not where they came from. And we let, uh, we, we teach a kindness program uh, through the animals that if all these different species can get along, so can you. So as I said, it's free to get in. The only thing you must do is sign a waiver because they are loose. <laughs> I love it. Mary, isn't that great how all the animals at Lori's Funny Farm get along as long as they don't talk? as long as they don't talk politics. Exactly. It's amazing how that happens. And Lori, I, I would be remiss not uh, sharing, if you can share a little bit about your mom. She seemed like such an inspiration. You talked about her in the book. Please mm -hmm. share about your mom, because really, I truly believe that you would not be where you are today if it weren't for her. Oh, absolutely. So if it weren't for my mom, I would never have this farm. I always said my mom was going to be a nun and then married the devil. My father, we took off and he was very abusive. We moved into a little shack in the woods. And then she started working at uh, animal shelter and started bringing home all these animals. So as a young girl, I always promised her I would buy her this uh, a farm of her own. And in my late 20s, she was diagnosed with cancer. So my dreams, her dreams sped up because I tried to buy this for her. And then next thing you know, she passed away right before I made settlement. So I became an instant, I became an instant. Um, <laughs> All right, here's the funny farm at its best. All right, go outside now. Clearly, <laughs> we are 11. taping live with no editing. But go ahead, go ahead, pick it up, Lori. I have 11 dogs, 25 cats, a cockatoo, and two chickens in the house presently. They do all live together. Um, outside, there's uh, over 600. So it is crazy, but crazy good, I say. Um, Your mom they, would be proud of you, would she not? Yeah. So this was, I never even think, I don't even know if she could dream it this big. It started out 35 and I was my mother's daughter and couldn't say no and just kept taking in animals. So it's been, and I have a full-time job. So this is not my real, what? I'm a graphic designer and photographer. I work for the FAA and I'm a private pilot, but this is my passion, the animals. Uh, uh, so by the way, Mary, that makes it clear to you that you can run a dog rescue and still run two companies that we're involved in. That as long as you're okay with the barking and the shenanigans going on in the background when we're in our meetings. Oh my God, I love that puppy so much. <laughs> Mary, I, this is, I, it's so funny, Lori, this is obviously your passion. It's Mary's. Mary, oh my gosh, I, she I've is, never seen your face like this before. I, I am seriously glowing. My sister texted me. She's like, did you have on Lori yet? Did you have on Lori yet? <laughs> and it's just so funny. My, my cousin and I have talked about for the longest time. We actually just set up a Zoom meeting. There's a woman in South Africa who runs a dog rescue. It's a mobile dog rescue unit. 
And, you know, we reached out and the same thing. We just had somebody on talking about the ask and we put out the ask to this woman in South Africa and said, would you be willing to talk with us? We're looking to do a comparable thing here in the States. And sure enough, she responded. And next week we're talking to her. And, and it's all about making these connections, right? And and my kids are now, I had my own funny farm with my two kids. Now they're adults, almost young adults. So uh, I do want to segue into one question though that I really need to know. You've had all of these animals on your farm and you've just you know come into contact. Is there one that really stands out to you that really, we obviously we're here talking about leadership, that really just showed you that animals can be leaders. Animals can teach us to be leaders as well. So I have my large German Shepherd. He was the one who was just barking. He's usually silent, but when mom goes on, he has mega esophagus and he was supposed to live six months and he is four years old. His name is Tucker. So he backs into a chair, sits up and has to have the food, liquid food go down into his stomach or he would starve to death. And this dog is like a human. Anywhere I go, he follows me. He is now a service dog. He doesn't have, he's unleashed trained, meaning you can go anywhere and he just sits right by my hip. He has kids climb on him like a horse. He's amazing. Right with me here, but you probably can't see him because he's too low. When you're a human, you spend that much time with an animal that he has to eat every three hours. Uh, blended food, like a doggy milkshake. And then he has to sit up for at least 10 minutes and you sit with him. You, you just develop a little bit closer bond than, you know, the, the average animal that you have. So, yeah. Mary, Mary, yeah. These, these pets have personalities, Mary. Oh my God. Oh, totally. Yes. Oh my God. There's the Dell. <laughs> That's a Dell. So this oh. is a Dell, the diva chicken. Go oh, I don't want you to go too close here. So that is her. She she uh, is pretty old. We don't know how old she exactly is, but she you can see she just hangs out. Her nails are painted. <laughs> she can't that see is it. amazing. She lives and she sits. She can sit on top of the dog. She sits with them when they're in bed. Um, she doesn't lay eggs anymore because she's elderly. So she was surrendered. A lot of them become soup. So all of the chickens here, a lot of them do not wow. lay eggs. They're just kind of pets. But she lives in my house. She wears a diaper. Oh my gosh. Yeah, she doesn't have it on because we were just changing it out for for now, but was she didn't hey, for television there. purposes. She wants to be in her natural state. Oh, there's Adele's she book. Her own book too. This is a children's book. We're self-published. Um, the social media guy and I wrote this book for Adele the Diva Chicken. It's all true stories, real photographs, but it teaches. She thinks she is a human or a dog or a cat. She does not think she is a chicken. And we say, why label ourselves? Let's just be the best you that you can be. And it's all about anti-bullying and being kind wow. to one another. Uh, Mary, I've been doing this for more than a few years, as you well know. Um, Lori is about the most interesting person we've had thank in you. a really long time. <laughs> Lori, I want to thank you so much for joining us. Really well done. Wish you and all of your uh, family at the Funny Farm the best. Thank you, Steve. And I'm still looking forward for you both to come. Oh, I'll definitely be there. And if I can get Steve down, I don't know. <laughs> okay, you let uh, me know any day. I'll Got be it. there. I don't know about that. Mary and I will be back after this, promise. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by PSEG Foundation, Kane University, the Russell Berry Foundation, the New Jersey Education Association, the Turrell Fund, supporting reimagined child care, Atlantic Health System, Wells Fargo, Summit Health, and by the Fidelco Group. Promotional support provided by AM970 The Answer and by Insider NJ. I was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis when I was two. It's hard to grow up with CF. But I have an awesome care team at Goryeb Children's Hospital, helping me do the things I want to do, like play lacrosse. And now I've been recruited to play in college. Where you go for pediatric care matters. Atlantic Health System, because every moment is a moment that matters.